Okay, there's the boot, um, and as you can see, LFS 4.0 is the first option, so I'm just going to let that auto boot, which it should do now. There we go. And there's the kernel loading and booting, and the init scripts are running, so that's good. And there's a prompt, so it doesn't appear that we had any errors there all looks good let's see if we can scroll back yep uh, all right so that's the top yep looks like everything's loaded fine there so that's good So let's log in. And there's the prompt we've got. So let's do cat etc lfs. And there it says version 4.0, so that's good. Uh, df minus h. So that looks all okay. We've used 800 megabytes out of the 2 gig partition so we've got just under a gigabyte left um, let's try and ping the gateway that's working and try and ping this address yep so the networking appears to be working now if I try to ping my name server, that doesn't work. Let's try with the domain name. Okay, now one thing that was never created was resolve.conf. So I don't think in these early versions of Linux from scratch um, that complete DNS is work is working properly. It certainly wasn't working 1.0 and it looks like it's not working on here. So I'm going to edit this and create one and see if that fixes it. Um, but when I tried it, it didn't seem to work. So let's edit that. Insert um, domain mynet.org and name server let's save that let's try ns right that's working that's internally and let's try with the mynet.org yep so that's working fine so now I'm going to try and ping externally Yeah, okay, it is working. So it's just the case that the resolve.conf is missing. Uh, it does seem to be working fine. So that all looks good. So there's not a lot else can do with this now. So what, what I'm going to do in the next video is to add a few networking tools just so that um, this Linux Scratch is extended a little bit in that it can download things from the internet and that um, it can be connected to remotely so similar to what was done with uh, Linux from scratch 1.0 so what I plan on doing and I will do it in the true environment just to make it easy to copy and paste the commands is to install netkit telnet so that this machine can listen for telnet requests um, so there's a daemon running in a similar way to how Linux from scratch 1.0 is used um, again, it's just in case looking forward if I decide to build another version of Linux Scratch, which um, I might do, that I've got a way of entering the system remotely. Again, to allow commands to be easily pasted in. Um, I'm going to install um, OpenSSL so that wget can use the certificates um, and then install wget um, i haven't decided on open ssh i th still think it's going to be 
um, too old to work with uh, modern PCs. Um, I might do it anyway, um, just to try it. Um, and then finally, I'll install Lynx so that we've got uh, some sort of basic web browser. And the last thing I'm going to do, and I've left it to last because it's the most dangerous thing, is to update the Lilo um, boot code. So that because at the moment we've booted with the Lilo that was installed, um, installed with SUSE, I think. Come to think of it, I don't think I actually did this bit on Linux from scratch 1.0. So the boot code that's actually running is the Lilo boot code that came with SUSE. So because we've got a newer version of SUSE, what I'm going to do is to do some um, changes so that we can safely update that code and um, use that updated version of Lilo to boot the machine. And like I said, we're doing that all in the next video.